When you say that it's a monster, I mean, I, I want to get into the evolution of this. I actually, of course, I read the book. I watched the movie. We'll link to those things in the show notes as well. You grew up with Hamas throwing rocks at convoys, at Israeli convoys and things like that. Your dad was in Hamas. Your grandfather was in Hamas. What is it that... What, what was your turning point where you realized, like, oh, I, I'm... I'm in the middle of this organization. I mean, I know when you were young, the police, the Israeli soldiers, I should say, came to your house to talk to your dad for five minutes. Was was that story the beginning of your experience? It almost seems, as you tell it in the book, that that's the beginning of when you realize, like, oh, this is this is the real. This is a real thing that I'm in here. This is like a family legacy that's that's pretty serious. Yeah. Well, you know. First of all, my father was arrested by uh, the Israeli forces many times. He, w he was just released uh, a few weeks ago, uh, recently. Uh, he spent more than 25 years in Israeli prisons. And uh, as a child, you know, I grew up where a bunch of uniformed soldiers uh, uh, considered by uh, the Palestinian society, my society then, as the uh, enemy, the occupier. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we did not like them. Actually, we hated them, and uh, we want them uh, dead. And uh, for that, they would come, they arrest my father and his other Hamas uh, friends and other Palestinian factions. It was a war zone, you know? Not only mm -hmm. arresting my father, we're not talking about like, you know, the police coming into uh, some protesters' house and arresting them in California, you know. Uh, we're talking about, you know, uh, army uh, coming into the house with their rifles, pointing at everybody, and sometimes there was shooting, and sometimes there was clashes outside, sometimes uh, uh, children got shot, sometimes elders got shot. Uh, hundreds, thousands of people died during the first person in Intifada. And I was living just right next to the cemetery of, of the town, which as a child at the age of 10, I witnessed uh, uh, the burial of, of dozens, hundreds of people on a daily basis. You know, the bodies just kept coming and coming and coming. Of course, talking about it right now sounds exaggerating, but like even... For me, right now, it's very hard actually to believe that I, I had to go through that to see the human brutality. So it's not as simple as just like, you know, they took my daddy, you know, away, <laughs> you know, and the child now have some prejudices, you know. We're talking about hardcore human ugly side, you know, as ugly as it can get, you know, where everybody's living in fear, where everybody wants to shoot everybody where everybody's uh, uh, trapping everybody. So in, in this uh, chaos, human chaos, where the truth is lost, where, where a child honestly doesn't know a better truth, you know, for me, my father was the truth. You know, he was everything. And what to do with those uh, uniformed soldiers coming into the house to just arrest my father, you know? Of course, any child, if you were in my position, you would hate them. Um, but that was not only a personal thing. It was, it was a personal thing. It was ideological thing. It was uh, a, a national uh, thing. All the groups, religious groups, if you go to the mosque, the, 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 the mullahs or the imams are inciting against uh, those occupiers. Uh, gravity on the uh, graffiti on the wall is inciting against the the occupation uh, the media uh, the family uh, the parents so uh, many uh, uh, external uh, forces uh, are pushing you to believe in one thing that this is the common enemy and uh, we have to fight them. 